what people are struggling most with is trying to separate what's viable, allowed, protest, what turns into hate speech and intimidation, and what's going on within campuses versus outside. Because I believe what where you are right now is outside Emerson College. Hey, Julia, that is correct. Listen, I've been to some of the most prestigious campuses in America here in the last few days. Uh, Yale, Harvard, MIT. I'm here at Emerson, right outside Emerson College right now. In the case of Yale, Monday morning, we saw tensions rising between police and protesters to the point that just under 50 of them um, were arrested for refusing their orders uh, to vacate the property, vacate the encampment, um, essentially calling them trespassers. Here at Emerson, we're seeing um, this large crowd uh, of just over 20 tents set up here in this alleyway leading up to the college signage, uh, food, water. This is a very organized uh, demonstration happening here. Over at MIT, we saw just uh, over 20 tents in front of the chapel um, in solidarity with the students at Columbia University. But they were quiet. Listen, a lot of these students were on their laptops. Frankly, it appears just doing homework. Um, they had the signs up. They were well welcoming people uh, to conversations and discussions. Um, and there have been no reports of any arrests there here or here at Emerson College. But we did get a sense on campus of the differences of opinions. Uh, there was a, a student organization, uh, MIT Israel Alliance, that actually wrote to school leadership saying that they felt unsafe on campus, claiming that a lot of the students had actually left their dorms ahead of Passover and are staying with um, relatives just because they felt so unsafe on campus campus, claiming also that the encampment was anti-Jewish. Then there's a different uh, Jewish group called the MIT Jews for a Ceasefire, and I asked them specifically about that. Here was their response. How can it be an anti-Jewish encampment when a large part of the people who are helping put it on is a Jewish community. And clearly a diversity of opinions here because no group is a monolith, right? I did ask that organizer too, what would happen if the school asked them to take down those tents to disperse of that encampment? And that organizer told me that they will not leave. They will not put away those tents until their demands are met. Hate has no place in our city. Uh, we should not be seeing hate in our city, and that is what I'm going to continue uh, uh, to to give uh, to be involved. And when I saw some of the, some of the specific comments that were being made at Columbia University, it really gets in the way of what people are attempting to highlight and fight for. Because we cannot uh, fight to say save lives while we are saying. Let's destroy lives. That just doesn't line up. That there are people who are here, they latch on to any protest. To see our police officers having bottles thrown at them, the number of bottles that were thrown, chairs thrown at them, people who peacefully protest for an issue, they're not throwing bottles and chairs. And so we know that we have acknowledged and saw across the country, there are people who come, have nothing to do with the issue, and they want to <coughs> aggravate. Now, if those police officers didn't show a high level of discipline, this could have been an ugly situation.
This man was nothing more than a human skeleton with skin on it. His eyes were black rings and little dots in him for the irises. Every part of his body had sores on it, vituperating pus coming out of the eyes. But he came at me, and I saw something in his eye that I had never seen before. What was I that? Could, I could see love, and I could see affection pouring out of the eyes of his body, and the hands on it, and he couldn't speak. 